everybody, and welcome to Live with Lon. We are so glad to have you today. And today we're going to be continuing in our study of the Gospels. Uh, right now we're at the very last week of Jesus' earthly life. And we have finished John chapter 12. So we're going to pick up today back in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and pick up some material here that they give us before we come back to John chapter 13 and the events of the Last Supper and Jesus' high priestly prayer as recorded there. So, that's our plan. We're going to be in Luke chapter 20 today. And, of course, we're using the uh, new King James Version of the Bible. And so, we're going to pray and then we'll dig in. Are you ready? Let's go. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of studying the Word of God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to earth and dying on the cross for us that we might have eternal life. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for rising from the dead to prove to us that your way is the one true way to eternal life and to heaven. And so, Lord Jesus, encourage our hearts as we study the Word of God today. Teach us and bring hope and fortitude to our hearts today as we live on this earth awaiting the day we meet you in person on the shores of heaven. And we pray this in Jesus' name and Everybody said, Amen, and what? Amen. Okay. Now, we're going to be in Luke chapter 20, as I said today. Just before we get there, let me remind you uh, that uh, this next week, we begin our Not a Sermon America outreach in Los Angeles and New York City. Wow. How exciting is that? Two of the most significant cities, not just in America, but in the world. And so we're praying that financiers and Wall Street people and hedge fund people and uh, financial people and actors and actresses and media moguls will listen and hear, as well as just ordinary people like you and me, and hear our Not A Sermons and be prompted to go to our website, notasermon.org, where they can get the full gospel and they get my testimony about my salvation, all of which culminates, I hope, into a decision for Christ on their part. So let's pray for that. New York City, Los Angeles. And second, before we dig into the scripture, I want you to see my shirt. Can you all see my shirt here? You see what it says? Look, it says Holy Land Pilgrimage Tours. That's right. And just want to remind you, uh, that our tour for Israel leaves on October 16. Please be praying for us. Uh, but we also, that tour is full. We also have one in February uh, that's two-thirds full. So don't wait too long. We really would love you to be a part of that. Uh, all the information is available on our website, lonsolomonministries.com slash Tour, T-O-U-R. Okay, ready to get in the scripture now? Okay, here we go. And it came to pass on one of these days, as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, that the chief priests and the scribes, the rabbis, came with the elders of the people, and they spoke to him, saying, Tell us. By what authority are you doing these things? Or who is he 
who gave you this authority. And he, Jesus, answered and said to them, I will also ask you one thing and answer me. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? We're talking John the Baptist. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, if we say from heaven, he will say, well, why then did you not believe him that I was the Messiah? But if we say from men, all the people will stone us, for they are persuaded that John was a prophet. And so they answered Jesus that they did not know where the baptism of John was from. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. All right, now let's go back and, and take this passage apart. Uh, let's exegete it and look at the individual parts and see what it says. And then we'll put it all back together as this is what we do, right? What do we teach here at Lon Solomon Ministry? Say it with you thought I was going to forget. <laughs> I don't let him forget. Say it with me. What? The Bible. Come on. The whole Bible. Come on. Nothing but the Bible. And then we apply it to our life. So we exegete the scriptures. We try to pull the meaning out. Uh, exegeto. To pull out the meaning. And so look at verse 1. And it came to pass on one of these days, meaning the seven days, well, actually six, before the crucifixion. Jesus was teaching the people in the temple, and he was preaching the gospel. And the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him and said, By what authority are you doing these things? Now, the reason they did that, my friends, is because the Bible tells us, look at Mark chapter 1, verse 22. It says, and they were astonished at his, Jesus' teaching, for he taught them as one having authority. There's our word. And not as the scribes. So when Jesus taught, there was an authoritative uh, uh, aspect to his teaching because he was speaking from God and he knew he was speaking what God told him to speak. And his authority as the second person in the Godhead shone through. And people sensed it. I often tell people who are preachers, young preachers, listen, you don't need to get up there and tell people how much work you did on the scripture this week. You don't need to say, I spent five hours in the Greek and the Hebrew. No, don't do that. Spend your time in the languages so you know that you know that you know that what you're saying is the correct interpretation and then ask the Spirit to give you authority and confidence to stand up there and teach it with authority because you know you're teaching what is the correct interpretation and you won't have to tell people you spent five hours studying it in the Greek or the Hebrew, the authority with which you teach from the Holy Spirit and from your confidence uh, that you know what the text is saying, it will filter through and permeate your message. You won't have to tell people how much homework you did. And this is what happened here, except Jesus <laughs> was the Son of God. Uh, he, he didn't need to study the scripture to know what it said. <laughs> he wrote it. Yeah. But that authority shone through in his preaching and his teaching, which is what here in Mark chapter 1 the people were so impressed with. You know, he taught with authority. So hearing him teach like that, the rabbis and the scribes came and said, Who gave you this authority? with which you teach. Friends, authority is not the same as strength. Authority is not the same as just natural power. You see, you can have strength, and you can have 
power in yourself, but authority has to be given to you. True authority is always designated authority. It is always given authority. It is always delegated authority from someone higher up the authority chain. So, if you're a colonel, the authority you have has been designated to you uh, by, by the general. And if you're a one-star general, the authority with which you command was given to you uh, by two, three, and four-star generals or admirals. And where does their authority come from? Congress, and ultimately the President of the United States, and where does his authority come from to lead the military? From the Constitution, and on and on and on. You understand what I'm saying? True authority is given. It's delegated. Now, all authority in the universe belongs to God. So any authority here on Earth, at any level, is delegated authority ultimately from the living God. Jesus' authority as the God-man, as Philippians chapter 2, the man who had kanao, he had emptied himself of his divine prerogatives for a while while he was here on earth. It was delegated authority to him from God the Father. And he says that throughout the New Testament. I do not speak on my own, but the words, the things which the Father has given me to say, that's what I say. So uh, this, this is where his authority was delegated from. And then he delegated authority to the disciples to go cast out demons, to go preach the gospel. Okay, I think you got it. And it's interesting, that's what they say here. Who gave you this authority. Now we see Jesus say this very thing in John chapter 5 verse 26 and 27. He says, for as the Father has life in himself, and so he is given to the Son to have life in himself, and look at this, verse 27, he the Father has given him, the Son, look at this, authority to exercise judgment also because he is the Son of Man. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus says, so you, that, so you may know that I have the authority to forgive sins. Luke chapter 4, verse 36, And they were all amazed, and spoke among themselves, saying, What word is this? For with, look at this, authority and power, he, Jesus, commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. So I think my point is clear, that Jesus had authority given to him by God the Father while he was here as the God-man on earth. Now, this was not just true of Jesus. Friends, like I said, all authority comes from God. And it's interesting that the Old Testament says uh, this in a very interesting way. The Old Testament records God speaking to Cyrus the Great, the first king of the Persian Empire, and to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the Babylonian Empire before Cyrus. And in both cases, God said, where did you get the authority to go conquer half the world? Ha, huh, I gave it to you, and when I'm ready, I'll take it away. Uh, look, look, look at the Old Testament. Look, first, let's look at Jeremiah 27. Look at verse 5. I have made the earth, God says, the men and the beasts which are on the face of the earth. And how did I do it? By my great power and by my outstretched arm. And look at this, I will give it, I will give the earth and the peoples on it 
to the one who is pleasing in my sight. And now, look at verse 6, I have given all these lands into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, my servant, and I have given him also the wild animals of the field to serve him. All the nations shall serve him and his son and his grandson until the time of his own land comes, uh, then many nations and great kings will make him their servant. What's God saying here? Hey, he's saying, I own the earth. I give authority to whomever I wish. And temporarily, I've given it to Nebuchadnezzar. His son, his grandson, and then I'm going to give it to somebody else. And, and they will have authority over his family. And who did he give it to then? God gave it to Cyrus, the great, the first king of the Persian Empire, who captured Babylonia, the Babylonian Empire. Uh, look what God says to Cyrus. is Isaiah 45, verse 1. Thus says the Lord God to Cyrus, his anointed, whom I have taken by the right hand to subdue nations before him, and to loose the loins of kings, and to open the doors before him so that gates will not be shut. I will go before you, Cyrus, and make the rough places smooth, and shatter the doors of bronze, and cut through their iron bars, and I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden wealth of secret places, in order that you may know that it is I, the Lord God of Israel, who calls you by your name. Verse 4, though you have not known me, it doesn't matter, even though you have not known me. To summarize, all authority is delegated, and ultimately, it's delegated from God. The reason why Russia controls the territory it does today it's because just like Cyrus and Nebuchadnezzar, God said, that's what I'm giving you. Uh, the reason uh, that uh, different countries are able to uh, uh, take over other countries down through history and have empires down through history. Why? Because God decided they were going to do that. And when God decided they weren't going to do that, it all faded away. How could... Alexander the Great uh, win uh, battles uh, uh, over the, uh, the Persians, like the ba Battle of Gargamela, where he was grossly outnumbered. Uh, this is in modern-day uh, Iraq, the Battle of Gargamela in 330, I'm going by memory here, I think 332, as I recall. He was greatly outnumbered. There was no chance he could win that battle, but he did, and ended up taking over the whole Persian Empire and most of the known world. How? Why? Because God decided, I'm giving all of that to, to uh, uh, Alexander the Great, and the Persians couldn't resist him. I don't care how many people they had. You understand? Now, this is a very important principle that we'll come back to in our so what. Okay, now let's move on in the passage, though, and finish this up. And Jesus answered their question, chapter 20 of Luke, verse 3, and said, I'll ask, I want to ask you a question before I answer your question. And the baptism of John the Baptist, he said, was it from heaven or from men? Because John had testified, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So if they said that the baptism of John was from heaven, well, then why didn't they believe Jesus as the Messiah? And, of course, they reasoned and said, well, if we say it was from heaven, he'll say, well, how come you don't believe that I'm the Messiah? And if we say it wasn't, the people will stone us because they're convinced John was a prophet. So we, we, this is a no-win answer. And they said, so we don't know where it was from. And Jesus said to them, okay, 
Well, then neither will I tell you where my authority comes from. You say, that was kind of mean, wasn't it? No, folks. How many, he had told them again and again and again where his authority came from already prior to this. He already told them the things that I speak, they come from God the Father. The authority that I have, we just read it a minute ago, John chapter 5, he has given me authority to exercise judgment, Jesus said in John chapter 5. He has given me the authority to forgive sins, Mark chapter 1. He has given me the authority to cast out demons, Luke chapter 4. And Jesus is going to say, before it's all over, Matthew 28, 18, look, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth by God the Father. He's told them where his authority came from. He's not being rude. They're asking a pedantic, ridiculous question. He's already told them. They just didn't want to believe him. So they keep asking him like he's going to give them a different answer. Not going to give them any different answer. Okay. Now, that's our passage for today. And now we want to ask our most important question. So are you ready? Come on now, let's do it. Here we go. One, two, three. Come on. So what? You bet. And gosh, what a privilege to be here teaching the word. My good friend Jackie. What'd he say? Say it with me. How sweet it is. Or as Jackie would actually have said it, how he grabbed his tie. How sweet it is. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. And I'm very excited about going to Israel in a couple weeks and teaching the people there. Uh, how sweet it is that the Lord has been to me in over 52 years. How sweet it is. Now, what's the so what? You say, Lon, all this is great. What difference does it make to me that Jesus wouldn't answer their question? So what? So what that he gave Cyrus and Nebuchadnezzar authority? So what? Well, here's the takeaway. Here's what I want you to remember today. Is that Jesus has how much authority? Matthew 28, 18. All authority in heaven and on earth. What does all mean? Well, it means all. All means all. Right? And this has a huge impact and importance for your life and my life. And I want you to see that importance in something that Jesus said to Pilate about authority. Turn with me, if you would, to John chapter 19. Jesus here in John chapter 19 is standing before Pilate. And Pilate is going to judge him, whether he goes to the cross or whether he, sets, he, he gets set free. And look what Pilate says to him, because Jesus is not being very cooperative. Jesus is not answering him. Verse 9. Pilate went again to the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said, Are you not speaking to me? What's wrong with you? Do you not know that I have authority? I have power. I have authority to crucify you. And I have the authority to release you. Now this word, uh, can mean either power or authority. Some versions translated power. Some versions translated authority. I like the translation of authority because that's really what he's saying. The Roman emperor has designated to me the authority to exercise judgment and send you to the cross or set you free. 
I have authority. And look what Jesus says. Verse 11. Jesus said, You could have no authority at all against me unless it had been given you from above. You could have no authority over me unless it had been given to you from above. What's he mean by this? It's very simple. Jesus is the second person in the Godhead. Jesus is deity here on earth. Jesus is the God-man, the Messiah. Pilate <laughs> had no authority over Jesus. But it had been temporarily given to Pilate in this one moment to have authority over Jesus. And who gave it to Pilate? Say the Roman emperor. No, 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 no. No. Jesus said authority was given to you from above. God the Father gave you a moment of authority over me, Pilate. And if God the Father had not given that to you, you could have no authority over me, Jesus said. Are you with me? Are you with me? Okay. Now. The people who have authority over you at any given moment in time to do things to you that might be hurtful, to do things to you that might be damaging, to do things to you that might be painful, to do things to you that might have gross consequences in your job and in your career, to do things to you that, that might have consequences for whether you make a high school ball team, or a high, a high school cheerleading squad, the people who have authority over you uh, in college as your teachers and your professors, the people who have authority over you, like a policeman who pulls you over for speeding, all these people and others, they only have authority over you as a child of God, if you know Christ, for one simple reason. And that is at that moment in time, the Lord Jesus had granted them for a moment to have authority over you. Their authority, the authority came from above. They don't understand that. Remember when we read that Cyrus uh, in Isaiah didn't even, didn't know God, even though God was the one who gave him his authority, yet Cyrus didn't know that or know him. The policeman that pulls you over, the teacher that's mean to you, uh, the uh, judge who tries you for speeding, uh, the uh, uh, whatever it may be, the person who hurts you because you're under their authority for a moment, they may not understand that they have their authority from above over you for just a moment, but you understand that. And that's the key point. My friends, you at no point in your life as, as a child of God, at no point in your life are you ever out from under the cover of God's protective authority. And even though he, listen to me now, may delegate a moment in time where someone may have authority over you temporarily for a moment, a boss, for example. It's only delegated authority for a moment from above. You could have no authority over me unless God were giving it to you. And if you look at the person who's doing you harm or doing you injustice or, or do, doing painful things to you or, or hurting your career, or whatever it may be, we have to see past them, like like they really did, like they're not even there really, and see that God is giving them that authority for a moment. You say you mean God is giving them the authority to hurt me, uh, to uh, hurt my career, uh, to hurt uh, my children, or to whatever? Yes, for a moment He is. 
so that you and I can grow through those experiences, so that we can learn to trust him better through those experiences, so that his purposes, which are way beyond our figuring out, can be worked out for you. All things work together for good. Maybe he's letting the boss do this to you now because he's got something way better for you as a result. But the point is, that boss has no real authority over you. You're a child of God. Uh, 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 that teacher has no real authority over you. You're a child of God. Uh, uh, that coach has no real authority over you. You're a child of God. And if they have a designated authority for a few minutes or a year, it's only because God's letting them have it. And when we can see that, and when we can say that, and when we can believe that, we, we, we can just smile at them and say, you know, you may not realize it, but the only reason that you've got this authority to damage me right now is because God's giving it to you. So what you're doing to me is the will of God. And, and, and I can accept it with, with peace in my heart and a smile on my face. You meant harm to me, Joseph said to his brothers, but God meant it for good. Potiphar meant harm to him, throwing him into jail. Potiphar's wife meant harm to him, lying about his trying to uh, have an affair with her. Hey, you know what? God was in charge the whole time, getting him into jail so he could make him prime minister of the country. Are you with me? When I was working for Giant Food... Years and years ago, back in the dark ages, when we actually had to push buttons on the, on the cash register and then hit the bar. <laughs> I know those are the dark ages, but I did that uh, back, in, back in 1972, 73, 74, even 75. I worked at Giant doing that. And... Uh, I had an assistant manager there. The cashiers were managed by the assistant manager. And, uh, boy, he didn't like me. I, I probably brought some of that on myself, honestly. I was a, I was kind of a young kid with a, 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 lot of, a lot of arrogance and a big swagger. And I didn't mean to be that way. I was 20, I was 20 some years old. But anyway, he didn't like me. And man, he used to make life miserable for me up there in the front. I mean, some of the cashiers, when it was slow, could get pulled off to go run a deadheads. That's when people like you just put something on the shelf. You decide you don't want it. Well, somebody's got to go get it off the shelf and put it back where it belongs to run deadheads. And, uh, or just to be able to do something other than stand behind that cash register. Not me, not if he was there. Mm -mm. I stayed on that register ad infinitum, ad nauseum. Uh, if I asked for a certain day off, he would purposely uh, put me on that day. Now, now I figured out a way around that. <laughs> you know what I used to do? Don't tell anybody. If my good friend Tom Titus who got me that job, but we was a manager and a supervisor in Giant Food for many years. Tom, if you're listening to this, don't tell anybody I did this. But what I used to do, we used to write on the schedule when we wanted off, if we wanted off the next week for something special. Well, I learned. If I wrote I wanted Saturday evening off, he personally, he purposely put me on Saturday evening. So I would write, I want Saturday day, not Saturday night. <laughs> so I purposely wrote, I want off Saturday day. And I didn't really want off Saturday day. I wanted off Saturday night. But I knew what he would do. He would look at that and he would say, you want off Saturday day? All right, you're on Saturday day. Well, then that meant I wasn't on Saturday night, <laughs> and I could take Brenda out. 
<laughs> hey, baby. I might be crazy, but I'm not completely stupid. If I had this little system figured out, I'm a little proud of myself. <laughs> I know, that's awful, right? But when he would do this stuff to me, you know what? I would stand there and I would repeat the words of Jesus to Pilate. You would have no authority at all over me if it were not given to you from above. And so, for right now in my life, God has given you the authority over me to make me miserable, if you can. And I don't like it, but I can accept it because I know it's not just you. It's God. It's God. And friends, anybody who's ever got authority over you to do anything, that authority's from God that he's given them over you. Whether they like you, whether they don't. Whether they treat you nice or whether they don't. Whether they help your career or whether they don't. Whether they enhance your school experience or whether they don't. It doesn't matter. See their authority as from God in his sovereignty. And don't worry. Nobody retains authority over you forever. There will be a time God will remove their authority like he did Nebuchadnezzar's. He will remove their authority like he did Cyrus's. He will remove the authority of this person over you. Once this person has treated you in a way that you've learned the lessons that God wanted you to learn, he'll take their authority away. Because as a child of God, the only one who really has authority over you is your father himself. Are you with me? Are we tracking together? Okay. So this week, you look at your boss. This week, you look at your teacher. This week, you look at your coach. This week, you look at anyone in authority over you, and you just smile, and you just say, maybe not to them, but to yourself, you know what? You could have no authority over me at all if it were not given to you from above. So do your worst. Hit me with your best shot, and I can take it, because I know you're only able to do it because my Heavenly Father who loves me wants you to be able to do it to help me grow more like Christ. And you know, this leads me to close with the words of a contemporary Christian song that's out right now entitled Never uh, by Tasha Layton. And I love what she says because it's an embodiment of exactly the truth that we're trying to talk about today. Let's put these words up. Listen to them. Never forsaken, never forgotten, never abandoned, not for a second. I am safe in your hands always and forever. Never forsaken, never forgotten, never abandoned, not for a second. No, God's got sovereign control over everybody and everything they do to you, and they can't do one single thing to you unless it was given to them from above. That's why I am safe in your hands, always and forever. Praise the Lord. May God use this to encourage our hearts and our souls in our walk with Christ this week and forevermore. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we know how hard it is when people who have authority over us use that authority to hurt, compromise, damage, cause pain, whatever, to us. To our career, to our schooling, 
to whatever it may be. Lord Jesus, remind us that that authority is not intrinsic to them. It's delegated authority. They could have no authority over us if it didn't come from you. And it only comes from you for a temporary time to teach us things so that we can grow in our walk with Christ. So Lord Jesus, give us the ability to carry this verse. John chapter 19, verse 11. You could have no authority over me at all were it not given to you from above. Let us carry this verse for the rest of our life into our everyday walk. And Lord, may it bring a peace and a surrender and a confidence and a calmness to our life where we don't get angry, we don't want retribution, uh, 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 we don't want revenge because this is from God whatever they're doing. And we can smile and just return good and say thank you because you're serving the Lord whether you realize it or not. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said what? Amen and what? Amen. All right, I got carried away. think I went a little bit long. I'm sorry, but what a great passage. What a great lesson. It'll change your life if you can do that, what we've talked about today. So praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. We'll see you next week on Live with Lon. God bless.